The 9800X3D starts to AM dip right at the start of the benchmark, and that was just actually pretty crazy to see. Oh my god, I actually wasn't expecting to see that. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel, and I hope you've all been doing well. Today, we're going to be revisiting Battlefield 6 now that the game is officially out. And here I'll be showing you guys some tests from my 14900K system, as well as the 9800X3D. We compared the performance of these processors during the open beta a couple months ago, and what we found back then was both of these CPUs would deliver a pretty solid experience. However, during that time, the modes that we had access to were a bit limited, and along with that, I was testing at 1440p with low settings, so this time I thought I'd do a full CPU-bound scenario testing using 1080p and low settings as the resolution. But I do have some interesting 1440p testing I'll be showing you guys later on in this video. I also wanted to mention that when we were testing in the open beta multiplayer, it was pretty hard to do a direct comparison between the processors because every multiplayer match is completely different, and being in a public match where there's enemies all over the place, you're bound to get killed randomly, and that'll just ruin or end your entire benchmark run right then and there. There are just so many different variables you have to take into consideration, and even if you showed yourself taking the exact same paths on each different CPU, the results could differ wildly because you could have one area where it would be densely populated, and then on the other CPU, it might not be as chaotic. So you do have to take all of that into consideration. So it's really difficult to get you know a direct comparison between them when you're benchmarking that way, and really the only way to get a direct comparison is to get another copy, get another 4090, and then have another party member join you with that system. And then you guys both take the same path and then pray that you don't get, one of you guys don't get killed along the way. But obviously for me, just doing a solo benchmark here, it just wasn't doable for me. Now, since Battlefield 6 officially launched, DICE has also introduced something called Battlefield Portal, where essentially players can create custom modes and variants of existing maps, enable unique conditions that affect gameplay like health, etc. Think of it kind of like Fortnite's creator mode or Forge from Halo. And I think this was a really, really good move on their part, as this way the community can create endless fun and content for the entire player base. And, you know, if they get bored of the official playlist, then players can hop onto these custom matches and modes created from the Portal experience. And thanks to this new portal mode, some players have also created custom benchmark scenes with bots in these multiplayer modes, which is actually a pretty effective way to benchmark hardware like CPUs as it's mostly repeatable. I say mostly because there's still some variance between how the bots will behave, but benchmarking this way is going to provide us with a lot more consistency than doing it on a random multiplayer match where you're forced to take different routes and, you know, getting killed at different points. Another reason why I was prompted on doing this testing is because some mainstream outlets or tech tubers would lead you to believe that a 14900K is only about as fast as a Ryzen 7 7700 and that the 9800X3D is significantly faster. That could be true depending on how you look at it, but from my own testing, this really was not the case. So that's enough of the preamble, let's get into the test system specifications and then we'll take a look at all the benchmarks and testing. So for both of the systems, everything is obviously the same. What is different is the platforms themselves and along with the RAM configuration. The 4900K isn't even overclocked or anything. The P cores are running at stock 5.7 gigahertz with a slight bump on the E cores and the ring at uh, 5 gigahertz. I did power tune it so that way it could at least maintain those clocks and then not just make up excuses saying, oh, look, my 1400K is running at 5 gigahertz. That's just stock Intel. The 4900K is running on the MSI Z790M power with DDR5 8000 CL36 memory, and the AMD chip is overclocked using PBO2 and Curve Optimizer, running on the MSI X870 Tomahawk, and is paired with DDR5 6200 CL28 memory. Now, to start us off, since we didn't take a look at 1080p low performance the last time we were benchmarking, the CPUs in the open beta, I thought we might as well revisit that as well, since in a regular match it'll be more CPU bound for us, so we can get a comparison that way. And the other thing I didn't do last time was when I was dying, I wasn't resetting the average, so it was kind of skewing the results there. But let's take a look at some of the footage here, and this first map is from Mirak Valley in the Conquest mode, so 
32 players on each side, you guys will see that both CPUs are delivering excellent performance. The 9800X3D seems to provide a higher average FPS compared to the 4900K. However, I did notice that the Intel CPU was doing a little bit better in terms of the frame time stability, thus creating a more smoother and consistent experience. So here's the thing, we already kind of knew this, regardless of whichever CPU you have, in these kinds of scenarios, you're gonna have a solid time regardless. But like I said earlier, when we're comparing this test footage, it isn't a direct comparison or apples to apples since it isn't from the same match and the dynamics of both of these matches is completely different. Now this is where we can leverage the special portal maps and I got this tip from Face Game FPS, a friend of the channel who runs a balls to the wall 4900KS system on his channel and he does a whole bunch of benchmarks so check his channel out and he told me about this custom variant called Mark the Bench which is a special bot battle map on the Empire State map. And this is actually quite a stressful benchmark test because it spawns like 91 bots and it's just complete chaos. But it's mostly repeatable and is actually an effective way of truly gauging and comparing the CPUs. You can also access this map for yourself by searching it in the experience catalog by typing in FX3W in the search bar and you'll see it right there. So here we have both the 9800X3D and the 14900K for the first test on this map. And what I did was actually just ran through the whole section. And then as we get to the end, I turned around and then I ran right back to the beginning. And what you'll notice is that the 9800X3D is providing us with a higher raw FPS and a higher average FPS. But the 1% and 0.1% lows on the Intel CPU are actually more higher and more stable. And you'll see during the mid sections where the action is really, really busy, the raw FPS figure isn't that large between the two CPUs. In those sections where the map is empty, that's where the 9800X3D widens the gap. But those sections are basically irrelevant because again, there's nothing happening there. And at the end, we see that the 9800X3D is 12% faster on average, but the 4900K is 15% faster on the 1% lows and 16% faster on the 0.1% lows. I did a second test as well, just this time instead of running through it, I was actually walking through it, thus allowing us to really capture in on the averages of the three metrics when we're spending more time in the midst of all the ongoing battle. And again, what you'll see is that during the heavy section, the 9800X3D's average FPS advantage basically diminishes and it's doing worse than the 1% and 0.1% lows compared to the 14900K. But then as we get to the end before turning around, the FPS skyrockets on the 3D cache CPU. Like at one point it was like 50 or 60 FPS difference, but that's basically an empty portion of the map. So again, who cares about that? But at the end, you can see that the 9800X3D is 15% faster on the average FPS. Whereas the 4900K is 10% faster on the 1% low and 9% faster on the 0.1% low. And when we walked through this benchmark, that's the result we ended up with. But the story doesn't end there. And unfortunately, things take a turn for the worse for the 9800X3D. Now I have a 1440p monitor and Battlefield 6 supports NVIDIA's DLSS4, which uses their transformer upscaling model. And we've looked at DLSS4 Transformer in the past, and for me personally, I found that using the performance upscaling preset actually provides us with an experience that's as close to native, if not even better with this newer model. And that's how I've actually been playing Battlefield 6 on my personal rig, which has a 5070 Ti. And I've had an excellent experience, the performance has been stellar, and it looks great. So I figured why not do a CPU test using DLSS for performance at 1440p because last time when we benchmarked 1440p we did it at native TAA but using 1440p using the NVIDIA DLSS4 performance upscaling model, the transformer model that is, it's actually going to provide us with a CPU bound experience because you're lowering your internal resolution and then using the AI upscaling model to intelligently upscale it. And honestly, I wasn't expecting this, and maybe this could be some sort of driver issue from NVIDIA or something with the game, or it's just a limitation of the Ryzen architecture, but for some reason, when testing Battlefield 6 on my 9800X3D using DLSS4 performance on the custom Mark the Bench benchmark, the frame time stability takes a massive hit. It's pretty wild to see this phenomenon, and when I had loaded into the map and was waiting for all 91 bots to spawn, 
The 9800X3D starts to AM dip right at the start of the benchmark, and that was just actually pretty crazy to see. Oh my god, I actually wasn't expecting to see that. And I thought maybe this was just a random spike, but if that was the case, we'd start seeing the minimums recover quite quickly, especially for the 0.1% lows, but it actually doesn't recover. But I did do multiple runs of it, and from this second comparison where we're walking through the benchmark section at 1440p using DLSS for performance, you'll notice that the 9800X3D still exhibits the same problem. Comparing it to the 4900K, you'll see that when we enter the busiest section of the benchmark, both CPUs are actually offering the same average frame rate, but the 9800X3D seems to be really struggling with its 1% and 0.1% lows, even dropping into the double digits, whereas the 4900K lows are much more stable. So at the end of this run, we see that the 9800X3D has that 8% advantage in the average FPS, but the 4900K is a whopping 23% faster in the 1% lows and 27% faster in the 0.1% lows. So ultimately, it's the 4900K which is offering a smoother and more consistent experience. The 9800X3D is only advantageous when the map is empty or where there's no action ongoing. Yeah, it shoots the FPS way up there and it looks good at a first glance, but that's just meaningless. And you guys can see how during the run, the frame time graph on the 9800X3D is like a sawtooth pattern, whereas the 4900K is it's a lot more flat over there. So that was very interesting to see and to observe how introducing DLSS in performance mode, even at that higher upscaled resolution, made the 9800X3D start to exhibit its AM dips. And a lot of people don't realize that when you guys are upscaling and even using frame generation, having a strong CPU with lower latency is what actually matters more. And a 3D cache isn't really the end all be all. Speaking of empty maps, I've seen the so-called system optimizers showing gameplay footages of Battle Battlefield 6 on places like Twitter where they're using a 9950X3D and having like 400 FPS, but their gameplay is all empty. So what's the point of that? They're just running around an empty map, but hey, there's a lot of people out there who won't recognize that, unfortunately, and um, they'll end up finding out. And on the topic of the 9950X3D, I've seen a lot of people talking about how they had to fiddle around with their config files, use process lasso, and faffle around with the core parking policy to ensure that the game runs on the correct CCD. Whereas on the 4900K, you don't have to do any of that. It just works great out of the box. But there you guys have it. Some CPU testing for Battlefield 6. Thought I'd put this out there now that the game has officially launched and we were able to get an opportunity to do some more direct comparisons between the two CPUs. And also because there's many outlets out there that just are not showing the full story. And at the end of the day, in no most normal matches, you're just going to have a good time regardless. But the 4900K does deliver stronger minimums and seems to have a cleaner frame time, especially once that Transformer model comes into play. Those empty maps people like to flex or of those screenshots or optimized system ads are meaningless when the action really heats up. Remember, cache is just a tool and it's not a religion. Latency, scheduling, memory, and platform maturity are still what really matters. And you shouldn't have to babysit your CCDs or mess around with core parking just to make sure that the game is on the rails there. If you care about smooth, consistent gameplay over scoreboard clout, then look at the lows and frame time consistently. That's where the 4900K really starts to shine. But that's going to be doing it for this one. If you guys found this video useful, drop a like and sub for more non-BS testing. And for now, we're going to be touching base in the next video. Take care. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.